Hello, welcome again. I think we're live. Are we live? We are live. We are live. I'm trying to figure out why I can't get LinkedIn to work. Steven, what's going on, my brother? When's hey, the last man. time we see each other? Um, you know, it's 2021. It's a new, it's a new year. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm rejuvenated. I, I spent 2020 thinking about all the things I was going to do once that year was over. Right. So right. In 2021, man, it's like ready, set, go. Ready, set, go. Ready to go. We're ready to go. 2021 is going to be huge. Um, it. And it's great to be here, right? It's, it's great to have made it to 2021 because it uh, 2020 was a tough year. And so um, it's just a blessing to be able to say, hey, this that year is over with and we're hoping for bigger and better things. Um, I'm going to get my uh, vaccine tomorrow morning. And oh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, mom, she ended up getting the vaccine, I think, on Saturday. So Which was vaccinations awesome. are happening. You know, they're happening. They're happening. I'm hoping to get mine soon as well. So I think we should all, uh, you know, get the vaccination and um, you know get on the other side of this thing so we can get back to normal. Exactly. Uh, whatever exactly. normal is, right? The new normal. The new normal, right? The because, new normal. Uh, things may never be the same. They may never be the same. We've got some some crazy times right now, and and um, I think thinking about all the things I was going to do once they uh, here. We're getting some. We have some big things happening this week on the on the political side. We, we don't. We said we weren't going to talk about politics, so not giving my opinion. But we do have the Atlanta. I mean, excuse me, the Georgia runoffs are happening this year or this this week, and also um, they're officially voting. I think the electoral college votes are supposed to go in this week. So we'll see what happens there. It should be interesting, right? Yeah, so definitely shout out to all of our uh, followers in Georgia. Just um, please encourage everyone to get out and vote. No matter how you, no matter how you vote, just exercise your right. Our ancestors worked way too hard. We can't take that for granted. Um, everyone is get, get out and next day. Georgia, Atlanta. This is all on you guys. Let's bring it home. Let's bring it home. And and Sean has already gotten his, or actually he's going to get his his uh, vaccine uh, when he gets off duty. Um, on Wednesday. And Sean, thank you for your service. Um, we, we really appreciate what you do for, for our city and our county each and every day. So thank you for that. And yeah, 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 yeah. So today's topic, Stephen, you want to tell everyone about today's topic? So today's topic, so we're just kind of thinking about 2021. Everyone has motivation, um, you know, goals that they've set New Year's resolutions. Everybody um, is probably thinking about how to be healthy and how to live better. But a big topic that always happens around New Year's Eve is like how one of my New Year's resolutions is like, let's make mon more money. How do I make more money? Exactly. Uh, you know, I, I need to make more money. I need to be able to get nice things and do nice things. And so the question that we have today is how much is enough? Like when when is enough enough? What is the magic number for everyone that says that I've arrived, I've made enough money to say that I, I could stop, you know, chasing that little white bunny or whatever they call it. <laughs> exactly. Uh, to get there, right? That's right. It's it's all that's the big the, the age old old question, right? Is when what is what when is enough enough, right? How much money do we actually meet need in order to become financially free or be able to to, to attain the things, to do the things that we've ever always wanted in life? Exactly. Um, it is a it's a, a question that I'm sorry, I'm getting some, okay, we're good now. Um, it's a quest, age old, old question that many ask, and there's really a lot of different answers for it, right? So um, yeah. let's let's get to it. Um, um, hey, Janice, see Janice is on the line as yeah, well. Hey, how are you? Uh-oh, I don't know why I'm getting an echo there. Is it echo for me? Can you hear me? I can't. Okay, awesome, awesome. So everyone, we want you to chime in and just tell us that the first question is, is that one, um, uh, the, the, well, I guess the age old question is, 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 is uh, how much money does it, does, does it take in order for you to, to be happy? You know, what defines happiness? How much, how much is enough? You know, what do you define as, as enough money 
um, in this world. And we're going to talk about it a little bit more, but we want to we want to get your feedback on that. So just kind of chime in and tell us. We don't want to know how much money you make. We just want to know how much you think, how much is, a, is enough or what you would do, you know, uh, if you had all the money that you needed in, in this life. So, um, and I know uh, growing up, I, I think growing up, everyone always said six figures. I want to be, you know, I want to be in six figures. I want to be, in, that was always like the goal is to be in six figures. And, and that was like a major milestone for a lot of people. And, and you know, the question is, is that if you get to six figures, which, which is a hundred thousand dollars, right? For most people, that's the, the bottom, the beginning rung of, of six figures. Is that enough? Or, or, or is it, or, or is there more that you have to, more you have to do? That's a really good point. So Steve, let's talk about the stats really quick. So, so Steven, you mentioned six figures and that's really that big question or the big kind of goal for everyone. If I can make it to six figures, if I can make a hundred thousand right. dollars or more, well, here's the reality. Only 9% of Americans make a hundred thousand dollars or more a year. So, so first off, if you make six figures, you should applaud yourself, pat yourself yes. on the back, because exactly. that's an amazing accomplishment. And just know that only 9% of America makes more than $100,000 per, per year. So that's, that's just amazing. But also for those who don't make it, just under, understand only 9% of the population make $100,000 or more a year. So don't beat yourself up about it. And, and in fact, the average amount uh, the average salary for Americans is what sixty-two thousand, Stephen. Right. So we were right. saying sixty-two thousand. We read so sixty-two thousand is the average. Sixty-two five eight five eighteen to be on to to be fact factual, and the top one percent of 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 the United States make three hundred sixty-one thousand dollars a year on average. So that's the top one percent. But there's a big jump there, right? Because the top nine percent make a hundred thousand dollars or more. The top one percent, it's about three hundred sixty-one thousand dollars or more. But really, do you need three hundred sixty-one thousand dollars? Do you need a hundred thousand dollars a year in order to to have enough? You know, what is enough for you? What What do you consider um, financially free? You know, and, and so there's so many different questions that we could ask in that. But but really, we want to just kind of dive in a little bit more about. You know, when we're when we're on this constant pursuit of trying to get more and more money, at what point in time do we stop pursuing more money and we start pursuing happiness or start pursuing those things that actually bring value to our lives? So, Stephen, what what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. So, you know, we start talking about the basics, right? The basics, right? Um, but it, uh, and I'll I'll start back to to my story of, of being an accounting right. So in accounting, you get to manage <clears throat> a large number of number of dollars, right? So you're accounting for companies' uh, financial statements, and when you're a lower level accountant, you, you manage a smaller amount of money, and when you get to a higher level, you're managing a bigger amount of money. So the question would be, you know, hey Stephen, what's the difference between managing one million? versus managing 100 million. And the only difference would be two zeros, right? Because you're still doing the same activities for managing the 1 million as you're managing 100 million. It's just that you're, you've got a couple of extra zeros. And that goes into thinking like we think about what is it, what kind of car does it take, take you to drive from your home to the grocery store you know, to to uh, to to grab your groceries. What type of vehicle do you need, right? You just need a vehicle that operates <laughs> as you from A to B. To, to B, right? So whether or not I drive a Honda Civic or I drive a Bentley, you know, or or, or or Ferrari or whatever the case may be, at the end of the day, that vehicle is only getting me from point A to point B, and as long as it's getting me there safely um, and successfully back and forth hopefully has a little ac and a little heating in there that should be our that that should be a, a a good point for us so what happens a lot of times is that you see the people that make more money um are basically they sit they still have the same lifestyle if you will as, as we do it's just that the cost that they spend on different things like houses cars uh vacations things of that nature increases but it's still a vacation it's still a car it's still a home I agree with you 100%, Stephen. I think that sometimes we get caught up on what society says is success 
and we see we see the celebrities driving around in nice cars and they're you know they're popping bottles and all that kind of good stuff and we want that lifestyle but that lifestyle is really not reality you know at the end of the day Stephen, you hit it you were spot on i mean a, a a vehicle is a vehicle we should be blessed enough to say hey we can get from a to b put gas in that vehicle and that should be good enough you know you can get a pair of wranglers jeans that cost 25 dollars, and that same pair of jeans will work will last just as long as a pair of whatever the more expensive ones are true religion or, or seven of mankind that may cost you 300 dollars. just still a pair of jeans it's still cotton it's still the same thing. It's still protecting you and giving you something to keep to, to make you warm. But um, some great comments here. So we might as well jump into those real quick yeah. before uh, we, we continue on. Clint, our our, our neighbor from 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 uh, Chasewood, from Chasewood. 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 Road, uh, right. he said enough to support your life and family without struggle is enough for me. That is spot yes. on. Absolutely. It's all about family. It's all about you know, um, uh, not having a struggle. Janice and Janice, hey, Captain Terry, um, uh, Army buddy, uh, having the ability to pay bills by uh, by direct deposit without any worries, along with the great retirement. Uh, I love it. So those, the, a lot of people are talking about things that, that make sure that you're comfortable and you don't have stress. Um, what Tanisha said, Tanisha says, hustle backwards. Um, scaling back is my thing. Living off of 60% of what you make is, is my goal to put more income to be put in more com income to be liquidated. I know too many, uh, too many that the more they make the, uh, the, is really the more they spend because they're, they're not uh, spending right. appropriately. And Tanisha, you hit it right on the nail because you're going to be broke regardless of how much money you, you make if you spend it all. You know, and so and 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 making more money doesn't mean you ha you necessarily have less stress because if you're you one you're spending a lot of uh, time and hassle trying to make all that money, but then if you're spending it all, then you're gonna stay stressed because you're still you're you're trying to pay those bills. You're still chasing, you know, um, another dollar just in order to to be comfortable. Um, Sean says years ago I deployed to Crystal Beach back <coughs> after a hurricane. And after I saw everything, everyone's things buried in the sand, I realized that everything you own is just stuff. And that at the end of the day, your health, your family um, is your blessed money. It, 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 and that's what gives you comfort. Uh, we, we currently have everything paid off and my family is healthy. And so I feel blessed. I love it. That yeah, sounds health like is wealth. Uh, health is definitely health is wealth and he's financially free. What's the name of the one guy? that does as a talk show Dave Ramsey. Dave, Dave, Ramsey. Ramsey. It's Dave Ramsey moment right there. So I love yeah, it. That's it. Uh, Janice says no outstanding bills, all property paid for financially free. Uh, Kamathi, my, my, my frat from uh, Langston KK Sai said facts. Tony Wyatt says real talk. I love it. I love it guys. Keep it coming. Keep it coming. That's so, um, <clears throat> one of the things that we were going to talk about and you guys already started talking about it is, really the question of what really matters. You know, right. when we're talking about how much is enough, well, first off, you have to you have to figure out what really matters to you. You know, if you know what what are you going to do with this money and, and and really at the end of the day, money is only money and cash is only a tool. It's a tool for you to use for something else, but the end goal is not just to have the tool. The the goal is to use that tool in some way and hopefully in a positive way and, and in which you're helping helping people and, and benefiting others. But um, uh, I know we have a list of questions here that we wanted just to kind of breeze through as far as things to think about when, you, when, you're, when you're trying to figure out what really matters in, in regards to using this tool called cash. Steve, you wanna jump into that? Yeah, so I mean, you know, the questions that, that we ask ourselves and we kind of came up with a list of the different questions, is, you know, things like what kind of life do, do I wanna live, right? Um, what is my mission? What is my passion? How do I want to make an impact on the on the world? And can I use the money that I that I make to make an impact? What truly makes me happy, right? Um, and then, what do I want my legacy to be? We, Sterling and I are real big on generational wealth, and so when we talk about financial freedom, and we talk about how, to, what do you want to do with the the wealth that you accumulate? We want to be able to give our kids and their kids. A different lifestyle than 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 we have, right? And every parent wants that, right? So that means that when I pass away, I don't want to 
you know, spend every dime that I have so that when I pass away, my kids don't have any inheritance to, 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 uh, to, to uh, live from. We want our kids to have an inheritance, inheritance and, you know, God willing, we want enough of revenue where our kids' kids can have inheritance. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's what it's really about. So we did, even the question about how much does it take to meet your basic needs, right? Um, but all of those are, are questions about what do you, what is it, you know, really thinking, you hear the age old point about money doesn't buy happiness, right? It really doesn't buy happiness. So whatever makes you happy at $50,000 a year is gonna be the same thing that makes you happy at $500,000 a year and keeps you depressed. And when we talk in 2020 um, and 2019, we can go down a list of the number of people that were successful made a lot of money and a lot of people's eyes would be seen to be very, very happy, but they committed suicide. You know, they, they took their own lives because they were depressed, because they were unhappy. So we know money doesn't buy happiness, right, Sterling? It does not. It does not buy happiness. As a matter of fact, it, it can buy a whole lot of stress and, and hassle and put you in, in a situation where you, you may have to make decisions that you don't want to make. Um, because once you start making a lot of money, you don't want to lose. You, 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 you don't know what to do when you start losing money. So really, really spot on, Steve. And, and, and uh, Jeff, Jeff Weber says money doesn't guarantee happiness, but happiness, it, it, but, but having it doesn't suck. That's a good point. You know, that's a good point. If you have money, it, it allows you the freedom to do some things that you want to do. If you, if you use this, that tool in the right way, then it can be really beneficial. But you can't, I mean, you cannot let money or cash rule you. You rule the money and the cash. So if that becomes your guide, then you're in a problem. It's a problem. It's an issue. But if you use that tool for the right, right, in the right way, then it's, 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 it's a powerful thing. It's a powerful thing. So I, I, I love, uh, you know, kind of, kind of things that we, we have so many friends like Jeff Weber is a perfect example where, where he invests back into the community. So he helps others. He puts money into its, into his family. So those, those are those are the things that are really important. You know, what, what, what kind of a legacy are we going to live uh, leave in this world? So um, spot on. You know, I did want to bring up one point, sir, and I mean to cut you off. And I, because I want us to be real. All right. Let, let's let's be real. I mean, I, obviously, um, having money is a goal and it can be an aspiration for a lot of people. It inspires it. It motivates you to get get nice things. I mean, we talk about, hey, if you had a Honda Civic or whatever, whatever, it doesn't matter. OK, let's be honest. Earlier. We, we both have exotic cars in the, in the driveway. We have very nice homes and we, we, we live a very nice life. So we're not saying to you, I mean, we're being real right, right now. We're not saying to you that you shouldn't aspire to want to have nice things. You should not, uh, you should, you should aspire to be able to, to live a life of being uh, happy um, and not being stressed about monetary decisions that you may have to make. We're just basically making the point of just saying that that should not run your entire thought process and psyche to a point where you're leaving alone or leaving out the important things like health that we talked about earlier or like mental happiness and those things that really matter as well. So um, use it to use money to aspire you for greatness and so that you don't settle and you don't become complacent. But at the same time, don't let it don't let it rule you. Right. Great points, Stephen. Great points. And, and, and just a couple of things. So some finance one on one, because, Stephen, you hit it on the nose. We all want to want to make money. Right. And, and then it's really about how we spend it really is the most important thing. Um, and and so heaven sent asked uh, asked if we have a recommendation for a financial advisor. We can definitely send you that. But just some one on one type things. First thing you want to make sure you do is you have, have 60 to 90 days worth of your expenses in, the, in, in your savings account. So so say if you're if you're monthly expenses are ten thousand dollars a month then you you need to have twenty to thirty thousand dollars sitting in a savings account first thing that's your emergency rainy day fund um second thing if you're not investing and putting money into your 401k you need to and you need to take that at least to a minimum of what your employer is matching so say if you're in a, a company and they have an employer matching program of three percent 
then you need to you need to donate or you need to to contribute at least three percent so you're at least maximizing on the maximum that your employer is contributing but really the max on you can do on a on a 401k is about 10 percent. so you max out on your investment opportunities you make sure your savings is there and then you start paying off your debt because just like Tanisha was saying, you want to live off of 60 percent of what you earn. And the, and the way to do that is you, you pay off your debt so you don't have as much debt. Once you once you get everything in, 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 in line and you have some money to play with, then you can do some 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 fun stuff. But the main thing is, is that we want to live life safely. We want to live life in a stress free uh, uh, way and we want to use money as a tool and we don't want to become a slave to it. Absolutely. So Sterling, so we, we, we asked a question earlier on, we were talking about this topic, we were like, okay, so what, what, what was the, you know, or what, for a lot of people, they have a, a, a certain milestone that they have in their mind about saying, okay, when I get to this point, this is when I know that I've made it, like, I, I have enough money to know that I've made it. And so what, Sterling, for you, like what, I'm not saying that you've made it to that point yet, but what, what did, do you have a point where you, you said, or you would say that I've made it? I know that my money is enough because I did this. Yeah. So my, the, 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 the one thing I've always wanted to be able to do is to make a decision that I want to go away, go on a vacation out of the country the week of and just say, hey, you know, on a Tuesday or a Wednesday, say, hey, I want to fly to to, to Mexico, um, and 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 enjoy the weekend, and and have the ability to 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 just jump up and go on an international trip, go outside of the country, and have a great vacation and come back. And so, um, you know, Stephen, we were just talking about, I was blessed enough to do that uh, with with Crystal, with my beautiful wife. We uh, we we flew out to, I think we went to Cabo or Cancun one or two, but we just up and just decided to go. And that's when I felt like, okay, I, I have enough money to where I can actually do things that I love because we love to travel and, 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 and make experiences, right? Make memories. So we were able to make memories together and experience, experience th something amazing. And so it wasn't necessarily about a monetary thing. It was about being able to have an experience um, and, and build a memory. But Stephen, what was that for you? So, uh, you know, honestly, for me, man, and this is a, it's a special moment. We just shared this moment on social media just about a week ago. Um, and, uh, you know, we we have we talk about our mom all, all the time um, and how much we care for her, the sacrifices that that she's made. You know, it's interesting that, you know, Sterling and I talked about this before as well. When you have kids, you recognize now that you have kids, that you have to, you know, make sacrifices for and raise and do all the things that you want uh, to do to make sure that they have a great life, you realize the sacrifices that you have to make as a parent um, in a much more personal way, right? That you may have not recognized when you were a kid. So when we were able to just uh, just to, uh, for Christmas, we were able to get our mom um, a new a new vehicle and surprise her with it um, and pay for that, you know, cash and, and no no debt. That was like a really big moment for me. I don't know that if that. I don't know if that is like a kind of an arrived moment or that I made enough money or whatever, but it was a milestone, right? It was a good feeling of being able to give back. Um, and, and I think that that speaks to how how well or how the feeling that you get when you give to others is more important or it's more memorable than it is when you give to yourself, right? So I could I, I could have gone out and bought a new car for myself or did something for me or whatever, but to be able to share something with someone else and to see the the impression or the you know the appreciation that that it had, that that gift had on them made me feel like okay I'm at a point now where I can make a difference or impact for someone else and, and that was a special. Great point, Stephen. And a shout out to all those people that uh, love the post that Stephen put out there. I think we have like 1.7 or 1,700 likes and, and almost a thousand comments. Um, and, and we really appreciate it. You, you really helped to make our mom feel really special. Um, and she is super, super happy about that. And so we were glad we were lucky enough to be able to share that moment with you um, because she is an amazing woman. 
um, anyone that knows her would attest to that. And so she, she deserves that and, and so much more. So, um, so thank you guys for sharing that moment with us. Um, just wanted to say, a, give a shout out to, to, to Rodney Buck Milner, to Buck, to, to my, my frat from uh, Langston University, KK Side, take great advice. Gwendolyn Hale from Langston, Gwen, Gwen, good to see you. Tell Tommy we said hi. Uh, she yeah, said, no Tommy. Thank you, uh, Janice is all over their international travel. That's what it's all about. Uh, Cassandra says uh, it's that it's, it's, it is definitely a, a defining mo a moment. Cassandra, we agree. As an uh, amazing, amazing opportunity and, and, and special moment. Um, and then Tony says, yeah, I saw that. Hey, you guys, that was awesome. What you did for your mom. Thanks, Tony. And Jeff says, uh, absolutely amazing. So thank you, Jeff. But yeah, it was it was definitely an, um, a great way, a great feeling um, to do that. So um, um, and then uh, Anton Collins says, great topic, great advice. Jason Bradley says, understood. So um, as we we come to a close and we really try to summarize what we were talking about, um, one, money is not everything. Money is only a tool. Uh, two, it's great to make a lot of money, but just know that really the average uh, salary in, in America is $62,000 a year. Um, only 9% of the American population make over $100,000. So if you make it, congratulations. If you don't, don't beat yourself up. It's mm -hmm. really more about utilizing. Money is all about how you use it. And so it's never enough if you don't, if you don't spend it in the right way. And you don't spend it on the right things, and that has to really come to come. It's really about what you what you value, um, but just make sure that you are not continuing to chase the paper for the rest of your life. Uh, try to enjoy life and spend spend it on your family and and, and those that that matter and that you love and you care about. Um, Stephen, what else? What else? As we close out, what do you, what else? What else can we can we uh, instill? Well, well, well said, uh, Brother Carter. Um, definitely just kind of letting you guys know that, um, you know, one thing I want to leave with is that um, it's nothing, again, like we talked about earlier, there's nothing wrong with desiring to have nice things. Um, it's just to, to make sure that when you go along that road that you keep you stay grounded and that you understand what really matters most. Um, and, um, you know, keep the family and friends and your health and everything else mental health as, as well as physical health um, all together is so important. Um, so we just, we, we kind of, we, we enjoy these podcasts and these discussions just because one, it helps us share with um, our um, our friends and, and followers, but also it, it helps us to stay grounded as well and, and to speak with each other. So appreciate you guys. Uh, shout out, I just, I brought a prop. This is, this is my, this is my little bunny prop. This is this is a prop to say that uh, for all of everybody that knows the noobs, J Five is coming. So when J Five gets here, we're gonna be like this. Ah! <laughs> in the house, J Five is coming. Yo, okay, everyone, have a good good evening. Have a great week. We'll see you on on next Monday. All right.